Boys, it ain't quite a beautiful day, but it is a happy one in my book. I got something. No, it's not that. It's these. Finally, a month. Oh my God. Well, it's been over a month. I ordered these on November 7th. That's the correct date. And yes, that's the correct temperature as well. Over a month to get a set of control arms. Now, this is absolutely no fault of Far From Stock. None whatsoever. It is solely the shipping company. And we won't name names, but a shipping company. These were lost. This is the third set. The third set finally made it here. Two of these sets are floating around... We won't say where. I know where, but you don't need to know. Two sets of these are floating around somewhere out in uh, out in space. But, god dang, we finally got them. And uh, we're going to get to putting them on. Um, I'm fixing to assemble them real quick, figure out which is the left and the right, because they're not stamped. I'm pretty sure I know which one's which. And I've got to run a few errands. And then I'm going to get to install these. And I'm going to call a partner of mine, my hunting buddy, and see if he'll line my truck up because he works at a shop right around the corner. And oh my God, I hope I can put this truck back on the road. Oh, I've been waiting way too long for these. So, control arms are finally in. I can finally finish tuning the truck because there ain't no laptop access on a VE pump. I got to tune this thing with these and a few tools so i gotta drive the truck to be able to tune it and one of these well this one right here could be one of my tuning devices i'll have to pull my pump apart and find out um but there will be more on that um so let me uh i'm gonna get these things put together and um we'll be back to install them all right so they're assembled i gotta say that's a pretty nice piece. Definitely a hell of an upgrade from the old sheet metal pieces of crap. And the whole reason they're built like this is when you, uh, so this two wheel drive truck, when you put a level kit or any kind of lift on the front of them, you end up sitting them on the bump stops because the control arm can't travel down anymore. So that's why the top of these are cut out in the center. It's to clear the coal bucket so that these have more down travel. Um, as it is now, the, low, the lower suspension is held in essentially by the shock because the shock is too short because I couldn't put any longer shock because these don't go down any further. So now that I have these, I can actually put the correct length shock in it and get some more travel out of the front, which will make it ride a hell of a lot better because before, not only was it bottoming out on the control arm bump stop at the top, but it was also limited in travel by the shock. So that's why the inside of these is cut out like it is. And there's supposed to be a new bump stop right here, but again, the shipping company busted the box. I'm just thankful I have what I got. Um, I also ordered a pretty cool keychain from Far From Stock, which I was really hoping was in the box, but I have everything to make control arms. I'm just going to put it on there. I'll call Far From Stock and say, hey, the box is busted. That shouldn't be any big deal. Um, and I'm not really worried about the bump stops. I think I got some of those. I'm just glad to have the damn control arms so I can put them on the truck. So I uh, figured out my left and my right. You can kind of see the offset of them. See the ball joint is offset forward. Excuse me. Forward? Back. Back? Forward. I got them wrong. Don't I? I know this is the left, right front. Yeah, that's right. Tilted forward. Yeah, I'm retarded. <laughs> it's early in the morning. It was a late night. Anyway, uh, I got to go see a man about a dog, and uh, we'll be back to install these. Y'all keep watching. All right, we back. And we got the first one on. And she's looking pretty sexy. Uh, had to do a little minor trimming. Just because, I, well, it's me, and I wanted to do some minor trimming. 
Um, it has an internal bump stop that's supposed to hit right down there and it don't do it anymore. So what I did was I chopped it right there. You can see where the bump stop used to go. Clarenced it a little bit for the upper ball joint. It still touches it, but it's damn near at full droop right now. Uh, you can see the clearance I got between the control arm. It's not much. Just right there. So, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. That's for damn sure. That's down like, uh, I don't know, probably an inch and a half, if not more, than what the original control arm is. So, uh, I'm calling that good. Uh, finish tightening it, get a cotter pin in it, and I can't get an alignment till tomorrow. I don't know what that shit is, but uh, I really want to drive it, so I'm going to do me a little uh, redneck uh, alignment on this thing. Put my little peepers on it and, uh, you know, do the whole... And uh, <clears throat> I've done alignments for a living before on a machine. Well, is that considered a machine? I'll get the tape measure out and get this dude uh, halfway right so we can do a test drive on it. Uh, let me finish this side up. We'll go the next. Well, boys, once again, I get to work and I forget to pick this thing up. Both control arms are now on. I had to modify this side the same as the other side with the bump stop. Uh, I've got her tape measured. Um, they ain't, it ain't got excessive camber in it like it did before. Tell the tire's fairly straight. I've got it towed fairly good. See that side's turned just a little bit. There's not a bunch of excessive camber. Let's go drive it and see how it does. Uh, and she feels good. I'm gonna run her to the store, maybe tune on it a little bit. It's been sitting here a while. I think I'm gonna get fuel filters for it. Uh, Cause it's been two years since I put fuel filters on it. I know the truck hadn't gone anywhere, but they bound to have collected a certain amount of moisture from the inside of the tank. It probably wouldn't hurt to put fuel filters on it. But the control arms are now on and I've got an appointment in the morning to get this thing lined up so she's right on the money so y'all keep watching i got more that might have been me can't remember all right from a roll hell yeah
pretty cold? I don't know. I haven't even looked. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Well, it's a new day and another project, but as you could see by the picture, I got massive problems with the control arms contacting not only the rim, but the tire. And at this point, it's really hard to chop up and grind on a $700 set of control arms. So, I absolutely despise wheel spacers, but I had to do it until I can figure out something else. Now... I want to clarify, this is not far from stock's problem. They clearly say in the description of the control arms that you need to check clearance because it doesn't clear all wheels. Now, I don't know what stock wheel size is on the Dodge. I'm sure it's like a 16 by 7 or something like that. I had a feeling they weren't going to clear stock wheels. But mine are 17 by 9s with a 4 inch backspace. And... That's quite a bit more rim than, than stock. But oh my God, do they run into it. I, I can get from about here to here before they rub. So just pulling out of my driveway is like a six-point ordeal. So I'm hoping I can do something. I, I went inch and a half. I hate wheel spacers with a passion. But if I got to do it so I can drive the truck until I can figure it out, I got to do it. I didn't know they were going to show up this fast. Uh, they got here in two days. So, yeah. We're, we're going to slap those on and see how it works. But, I finally got enough stuff cleaned up in the shop that I can get my, my old lady's car in here and get to working on it. And that's what I'm doing now. This is a junkyard transmission I had to get um, from Bradenton, Florida. Because there is nothing local to me that had this transmission. Uh, 90 model Toyota Corolla. And it's not the actual transmission section that goes bad. It's this differential section. Everybody I know of, everybody I've talked to, and every forum I've read said the differential in these transmissions is absolute garbage. And I've already built hers twice. So I just wanted a spare unit. And now I'm wondering because look at the oil that come out of the differential section. That is supposed to be ATF. And supposedly this transmission only had 150,000 miles on it. It's fairly clean. I'm just, I'm worried about it now. So I think I'm going to pull the diff cover off of it. Take a look inside of it. Uh, and because it's been so long, they give me like a, a 30 day warranty or something. Now it's a junkyard. They can't guarantee every problem. What they did guarantee me was... The car this came out of drove off the trailer that they pulled it in on. That's all they can tell me. And that's understandable. It's a junkyard. You know, they sold me a sealed transmission unit with a converter in it. 
and they told me they were going to pull the pan off of it and make sure there weren't big chunks in it and that the pan and the insides looked good. They were going to seal it up and ship it. That's all you can ask out of a junkyard part. So if there is something wrong with it, I can't blame them. They don't know. But I've got a few pieces for it. I've got CV axle seals. I've got a converter seal. I've got a pan seal. I've got a diff cover gasket. I'm going to kind of pull it apart, inspect it, look at it, see what my backlash looks like. The oil looks terrible. And as far as the oil goes, let me, let me turn this damn heater off. I didn't realize it was still running. Um, this is the 18th of January. And it's 72 degrees in the shop. And the only reason I turned the heater on was it, it helps take the moisture down in here so shit doesn't flash rust and whatnot, like all my tools. Uh, anyway, as far as the fluid goes, we'll talk about that a different day. I've got a whole tangent I can do on fluids and additives, and that's a whole nother day. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to putting these spacers on the Dodge and see if we can get enough clearance out of them to actually drive the truck because I'm tired of this thing sitting around. Um, we're going to see what we can do with it. So stay tuned. I'll be back in a minute. That old southern weather got me again. It's starting to rain. I got one side done. Um, it's cambered a little bit because I've had it jacked up and down. Once it settles, she'll straighten out. But they clear the control arms with an inch and a half spacer. Now, the only problem I had was... Look at the front of the fender. See the piece on the ground? I had to cut me a piece off. It sticks the wheels out so far. Yes, I had to destroy, destroy a first gen. Now you tell me, how does it look without it on there? I think it looks pretty good to be honest with you. It doesn't look out of place. It's a little higher up than than the door jam and everything, but I think it'll be all right. The, the wheels clear good. Um, only one other problem I got. Every other eight lug truck out there either has 14 millimeter studs or 9 16 studs. Well, because this was back in the day and this essentially, there were two different suspensions under these trucks. Well, okay, there was three. There was a three quarter ton gas burner there was a three-quarter ton diesel, and there was a one-ton diesel. The three-quarter ton gas burners had smaller ball joints, smaller wheel bearings, same rotor, and half-inch studs. When you went to three-quarter ton diesel, you got bigger ball joints, bigger wheel bearings, same brakes, and half-inch studs. When you went to a three uh, one-ton diesel, you got the same suspension I got, but 9 16 studs. Now, the only wheel spacer I could find was a 9 16 Nobody makes a half-inch studded eight-lug wheel spacer that I can find. So I had to take my stock lug nuts and cut the little cap off of them so that they don't protrude out of here. And then I'm just using these as my lug nuts. That, that ought to be just fine for a lug nut. And I'm torquing them on there. So I'm just about to put this other side on. And uh, make sure everything clears on that and the front will be done. Then I can pull it around, do the back, and I'll have to, of course, cut all my factory lug Well, I say factory. Those are aftermarket lug nuts. Um, cut them for the rear, and the truck will be done. In my opinion, it don't look too bad. Uh, gave it a little bit of stance. I'm not into the 80 skateboards. Um, didn't poke them out too much kind of dig it the main thing is i can drive the damn thing now uh it, they completely clear the control arms clear the fenders and other than the bumper looking like it's way too low since i cut that piece of fender there the fender cut looks good she'll pull the trailer that's for damn sure who's angry with me who's that so it looks pretty good Go test drive it to the fuel station, put a little bit of that uh, good good in it, and uh, see how she rides with an inch and a half spacer on it. I'm sure it won't ride any different. 
it's sure gonna fling some more mud down the side of it but who cares about that oh it looks good and i've been uh i've been driving it for a day or two with the control arms on it and just having to you know make 10 point turns with it since they don't clear and uh the control arms seem to be holding up nice um it, it definitely increased the ride quality and i think it's because they can travel now um so she got a little stance to her she looks pretty good now and uh who gives a shit about the paint anyway boys i think we're gonna end it here i think i got more than enough to give y'all some content um it's been a long time coming that this damn truck has run and it's like i put a motor in it and find something else wrong with it it is what it is it's back on the road now and i can start using the the truck again and the trailer and getting a little work done on the property and whatnot so anyway we appreciate y'all watching it's been turtle man y'all keep watching for more